Present day, it's Alicia, and I'm here for another Bible study. Today, we'll be studying Habakkuk chapter 1. Let's pray before we begin. Most righteous and eternal Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Father, we love you, we thank you, we worship you, we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor that's due unto your name, O Almighty God. It is you. It is you, O Almighty God, who created the heavens and the earth. Father, you said in your word, you have stretched out the heavens, you have spread it out the earth. Father, you have said in your word that you are God. You have said in your word that before you there was none form, and after you there is none. You have said in your word, O Almighty God, besides me there is no God. You have said in your word, O Almighty God, you are God alone. Glory to God. Father, you are the one who provides for us. Father, you give us our meat. And you give us a rest. Father, you also give us place to lay our heads. Father, you also provide our clothes. Father, you also provides peace and joy in our soul. O oh, Almighty God, your love, you give unto us liberally. Glory be to God. Father, how oh, excellent you are, how oh, mighty you are. The most precious gift you have given us is your son. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We celebrate you, Jesus. O oh, Almighty God, you who sits high and behold everything. O oh, Almighty God, it is you. Every time it is you. We give everything that we are unto you, O oh, Almighty God. We surrender to you. Father, we humble ourselves before you. Take our sins. Father, we confess and repent of them too. O oh, Almighty God, that which you have called our name on, even though you have given it to us, we present for you, O oh, Almighty God. Direct us how to use your good and perfect gifts. Father, because as you blot out our transgression and we trust you to purify us and to keep us, so we know that when you use us to do your good works the way you desire for it to be done it will be well done according to your good pleasure that is what we desire that self will continuously be slain that flesh will always be dead oh almighty god fill us up with your righteousness your truth your mercy your peace your love your joy your long suffering your faith your goodness your gentleness your meekness self-control oh almighty god fill us up with your grace fill us up with forgiveness fill us up with your discretion your discernment oh almighty god fill us up with sound wisdom thank you jesus fill us up with knowledge and understanding fill us up oh almighty god with the anointing of your holy spirit oh almighty god we always need you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you all the time, all the time. Do what you want to do. Take over. Take full control. Let your words come forth. Holy Spirit, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let the words that we're about to read, breathe upon them, Holy Spirit, and bless them, sanctify them. Give us the interpretations of them. Also, plant them in our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Oh, Almighty God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We desire that these words be planted in the fertile soil of Christ to bring forth fruits for your kingdom, that they will be abounding in mercies, that they will go forth and find grounds, that they'll be planted, that they'll bring forth fruits, yields in manifolds. Glory be to God. Father, everything that we do, every word of our mouth, every meditation of our heart, be in alignment with your will. Be acceptable unto your sight, O Almighty God. O Jesus, we bring every thought in obedience to you. Holy Spirit, set fire, set fire to every thought. Trial by fire, Holy Spirit. Through our entire being, set the trial by fire. Test us and prove us. And anything that's not of you, O Almighty God, let it be burnt. Let it be incinerated. Let it be cast aside and crushed. Let it be destroyed. O Almighty God, everything that is of you, be purified, be sanctified, be wholesome. O Almighty God, we yield to you. Fill us up with your confidence, O Holy Spirit. Embolden us to go forth and to do your work. Glory be to God. O Almighty God, we avail ourselves to be used by you. Father, remember the saints. 
Remember the sinners. Remember the wicked. You know where each of us fall. Father, you know how to help us. You know what our desires are. Father, the saints for preservation and protection and continuous comfort and guidance. Teach us not to sit back, hide up, while the enemy is there destroying lives and blinding souls and robbing them and, and, and crushing them and destroying them because he wants to take away as much life because we know he can't kill the soul but he will try to take away the life to steal the life oh almighty god we will not stand by idle and have the devil have his own way so father we come against every device of the enemy we come against every single kingdom of darkness every single agent of the kingdom of darkness we come against every single agent of the kingdom of darkness father we come against them trial by fire oh almighty god work oh holy spirit stir up like a whirlwind stir up Stir up, O oh Almighty God. Mix in the thunderings and the lightnings. Mix in the blood of Jesus, O oh Almighty God. Mix in your almighty power and authority. Throw in your wrath and your judgment, O oh Almighty God. And like a bomb, drop on the kingdom of darkness, O oh Almighty God. Scatter them, pursue them. Let the arrow that you have sent out not escape to strike at them. Because they are wicked. They always... They like to slay the babies, the innocent, the defenseless. They always want to eat up the poor and crush the needy, but you will not have it. They always want to oppress the upright in heart and to make war with the saints of Jesus Christ, but you will not have it. Oh, Almighty God, pursue after them and let them not escape. Thanks be to Jesus. Oh, Almighty God, remember the sinners. Remember them because their minds are being blinded by the enemy. But you see their need, you see their cry, you see what they're holding on to and they want to let go. You see them. You see them wanting to hold on to sin. Because they think that that's the next best thing for them. But Almighty God show them the filth, the folly, the, the garbage, the death coming at them. Oh, Almighty God, and let them let go of that thing fast, fast, fast and run into Jesus. The only life. Glory be to God. Father, let the wicked come to their senses. It's not that the wicked don't know Jesus. They know Jesus, but they just don't care. Teach them. The debt that's coming at them cannot be escaped outside of Jesus. So let me come to the senses quick and understand this. No man knows their day. It's all in your hands. So don't think that they're going to do it another time, another time, another time. This is the hour. It's now. Answer the call of Christ. As the Holy Spirit knock on the heart. Every soul that cried, oh, Almighty God, Jesus, rescue them. Plunder the kingdom of darkness and let them see. It's not their place. Mm -mm. It's not their place to hold on to a soul that's crying out for you. Glory be to God. Oh, Almighty God, that which you desire to do concerning us, let it be done, let it be done, let it be done. Glory be to God. Father, protect us before and behind, inside and out, all around. Oh, Almighty God, let your edge of protection be Fired up around us. Put your parameter around us and on everyone that is related to us. Everyone that's connected to us. Parameter our dwelling, our places that we enter. Oh, Almighty God. Holy Spirit, like a whirlwind. Like a whirlwind, spread out. And consume away. Restrain away. Glory be to God. Oh, Almighty God, they're going out and they're coming in today. Be with us. Oh, Almighty God. Like a standard, Holy Spirit, lift up. All around us, let peace be the portion that we walk in. Glory be to God. Let our words be sanctified and anointed by you, O Almighty God, that we will not be walking without you, but we will be walking in fire. Glory be to God. O Almighty Father, that which you desire concerning us, let it be done. O Almighty God. O Almighty God, we worship you, we give you honor, we give you glory. We cry out unto you, Almighty God. Father, teach us to forgive, to forgive those that have sinned against us as much as you have forgiven us up for our trespasses. Let us forgive. Father, deliver us from evil because you see the wicked enemy. You see, you see the devices of the enemy too. You see the principalities, the powers, the rules of darkness of this world. You see the spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh, Almighty God, it is you that will frustrate them all that time. The kingdom of darkness will know terror and torment and fear. 
Glory be to God. Oh, Almighty God, it is you that frustrate the tokens of the last. It is you that drive the diviners mad. It is you that turn their wise men backward. And it is you that make their knowledge foolish. Oh, Almighty God, make the kingdom of darkness unfruitful and unprofitable. There should be no peace in the kingdom of darkness, Almighty God. Let none of them escape. Let none of them have a place to call no safe zone. But let them be tormented on every side. Glory be to God. Father, rescue those that they are seeking after to hurt, to damage, to use, to destroy. O oh, Almighty God. And put your edge of protection. Glory be to God. Father, release the armies. Let them go to strategic places to minister and also to protect. Glory be to God. Jesus, send your commandments forth. Because your word is power. Glory be to God. As you have spoken, our King, we yield and we follow. Glory be to God. So today, as you battle it out for us, O Almighty God, speak to our hearts, speak to our souls, speak to our minds, speak to our spirit. Let us live in fire. Always worshiping in spirit and in truth before you, Almighty God, because you don't delight in anything else. But your loving kindness, your righteousness, your judgment. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. O Almighty God. As you have given us salvation, we are grateful. We are grateful in Jesus' name. We are grateful. And so, Father, as we go forth, whatever we fail to mention, you know us well. You know the desires of our heart. You know the plans that you have concerning us. You know the thoughts that you have concerning us. Almighty God, we yield to you. We trust you. We, we obey you. We, we worship you. So, Father, as we go forth, we wrap up our hands in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, our King. You have poured out your blood for us. We are grateful. We anoint our prayers with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, O Almighty God, Holy Spirit. You are the one who teaches us all things and leads us into the way of truth. Because you are the spirit of truth. So you point us to Jesus and you lead us in the path of righteousness that have been laid out for us to walk. Glory be to God. O oh, Lord, we send them up to you, O Almighty Father, O righteous Father. We send them up unto your sweet savor. May they be, may they be acceptable in your sight, O Almighty God, our Father, our King, or everything. Because we're praying in Jesus' name, the only name whereby we are saved. And we are so grateful. We hail you, we magnify you, King Jesus. We crown you, we honor you, we give you all the glory, all the praise. Glory be to God. Praises be to your name, O Almighty God. We lift you up with the highest praise. Hallelujah. We worship you. We bring in your glory, your honor, your dominion, your power. Almighty God, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Believe in knowing, accepting, and receiving. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's begin. Verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Glory be to God. Now Habakkuk is a prophet of the Lord. And Habakkuk's name means embracer or wrestler. So you have to understand that. He has embraced God by faith. And he also wrestled with God on behalf of the people. Now you see, a name is powerful. Sometimes a parent never get the word of God directly. Like, they don't hear the voice of God saying, When this child come forth, name this child such and such. But the name that they decide upon was not accidental at all. The name they decide upon was one that the father delighted in and make come forth and so Habakkuk he prophesied he was not living in times of ease you know we don't know the full date of his prophecy but we know that he was around when the Chaldeans were rising up and it would appear that he was around for some of the other kings that were still before the captivity of Judah hmm? He was around the destruction of Nineveh as well. We know that much. And he was prophesied when the Babylonians were rising up. So that means that the Babylonians had conquered Nineveh. And if they had conquered Nineveh, they were not a very long way off from conquering Judah. Glory be to God. So Habakkuk was there. You could say he was really fighting to see what could be done for the people. But take note of the fact. He was talking to God about the invasion of the Chaldeans. Now that was yet to come. But he was wrestling with God. Trying to see if there was any way that the people could be spared. You see, Habakkuk. 
based on some of the statements that he would have made, it would seem he was our Levite. And you know the Levite's office is basically being the ones that God speak to. He would speak to the priests to speak unto the people for the most part. The priests would bear the burden of the people. Particularly the high priest would bear the burden of the people before God. But the entire priesthood family, they would be God's people. Specially set aside unto God to be cared for by God himself. So that he was a Levite, as it is inferred by some of his statements he have made, testified to the fact that he was always at the temple in the presence of God. And he was going to see if there can be any word from God to give comfort to the people. And the Lord did do that. So while he won Judah, because he was not against the word of God, he was not against the word of God at all. Habakkuk accepted God's word. And he understood Chaldeans were coming. They were coming. It will not be stayed. And since it was not to be stayed, what happens to Judah after the destruction of their beloved Jerusalem? How can the people be comforted after? So you see, while he was talking about the destruction of the place, Inside Habakkuk's prophecy were some very notable comforts. There is one renowned that a lot of persons will talk about. And it's the fact that the just shall live by faith. So we get to understanding that he was given a lot of comforts. So though we may face hardship and trials and tribulation from time to time, let us not look at the trials and tribulation alone and, and, and wonder about and think about Oh, it, it, where is the hope? There is always hope for us. Regardless of all the outlook of the world appear. And in Habakkuk time, it did not appear good at all. Is what I'm trying to tell you. But you know what? He hold on to the, the words of God. The comforts that were in between the whole tragedy and the things that will take place. And he knew that as much as all the enemy will reign on the people of God, God will judge the enemies. Of the Lord because the Lord is in his holy temple and he is beholding everything so Habakkuk understood so while we go through see he asked some very harsh questions so while we go through bear in mind this he was a wrestler eh? <laughs> but he was not disobedient to the word of God take note of the fact so he was a prophet unto the Lord and he bare the burden he bare the burden it was not just a simple word it was a burden it was a judgment of god that was coming upon the people divine judgment was going to take place and he had to bear this to the people so let's continue verse 2 oh lord how long shall i cry and thou wilt not hear even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save you see because there was danger he was around when these kings the exact time frame is not made known you know but it was around when these kings it was a lot of time of the of the rule of judah so these kings were very violent blood ran in jerusalem so much it was so bad it was so cruel it was so wicked what am i trying to tell you there are consequences to actions you see because what a lot of people don't realize is when they do something other people are looking on and sometimes people take bravery from your actions. So if you're in a position of leadership and they see you doing something, they will get boldness now looking at you to emulate you. Because they go say, oh, well, if you can do that, I can do that too. It's not right. But you see, the problem with living bad when you're in a position of influence and leadership is that the followers that you have may very well take their light in the wicked you do to make it like an excuse for them to do theirs too. And so violence was very rampant in the land. And he was crying out to the Lord, crying out to the Lord. And he's answering, he's, and he's wondering, why aren't, you, why aren't you answering me? Now, take note, Habakkuk was not just crying out to the Lord when violence started to take place, you know. Abakuk had a personal relationship with the Lord. Abakuk has been crying out unto the Lord for long times about different things. He worshipped God. 
But when the violence started to take place, you know, he was crying out to the Lord, particularly, specifically about the violence. Like, God, this is now a trouble situation. Save us. Because if you don't save us, what going to happen to us? So you see, when a people is cutting down their own, senselessly, wickedly, without even a uh of compassion and, re and remorse, you know what happened. God has to judge. God has to judge. He has to judge. So he was crying out to God. And he was crying out to God, hoping God would hear him. He wants justice for the people who have been cut down. He wants justice for the senseless murders. He wants justice against the violent and wicked people that were going around and killing people. Because, lest we fail to remember, let me remind you, these people were doing a lot of idolatry. And idolatry always involves murder. And I'm not just talking a simple cut down of a person. Like, no. In the most violent way, for a lot of bloodshed and filthy. In fact, they defiled people's bodies because they want demonic powers. It's happening in our time, you know. So take note. Murder, violence, it's not normal at all. When a people is ruled by that, it testifies to idolatry being rampant. And people have turned their back on God. Because if we have God, we would not kill each other. But when we see people cutting on each other just like that because they can, it testifies to lawlessness. And you know it's demonic influence. So, let's continue. Verse 3. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that raise up strife and contention. So, here he is. Contending with the Lord. No, you know. He contending with the Lord because he's saying... Well, why are you showing me this inequity? You, you, you see, it's always before me. It's grievous. It's a lot of trouble. It's a lot of problem. He can't escape it. He's seeing it right in his face every day. The plundering, the violence. Because see, as all their wicked devices increase, it's as all they're seeking out more powers, you know. So you have one person go to a level and they decide they want to go to a next level. And they want to go to a next level. And what, what do we know? They were not moving forward. In the kingdom of darkness at all. Because the devil will not accept people who are called by God's name. To be, to be going and making no big waves in his kingdom. Mm -mm. You're loyal to God. At least you were loyal to God. He can't trust you. So they're going to be fighting. He, he going to give them the impression. Yeah, they're going to go up. They're going to move up. And he going to give them all kind of conditions for them to obey and to do. Because if they do this, then they will get this and that. And you know what happened? They were doing the worst of anybody else in the kingdom of darkness they were doing the most vile things they were doing the most wickedest thing they were doing so much evil that the nations around them were astonished at their behavior knowing that they're called by the living god's name and doing the wickedness like that like they outdo their neighbors it, it this is why judah had to be judged you know it is why they had to be judged judah did worse than israel who was doing idolatry for years so when you see israel who was always that that's not the kingdom i'm talking about no, no. they were always in idolatry and judah who always worshiped god became so idolatrous that they outdo the northern kingdom you know something got to be wrong something got to be wrong somewhere so constantly before habakkuk were the violence the murders the killing the iniquity because witchcraft was rampant. They weren't hiding it. They came into the courts of the temple of God and do it too. They were in the temple doing it too. Abominations were set up. Listen, they were not hiding it. So he had a complaint now. You know, there is so much strife and contention because wherever we see strife and contention every evil word the devil is there confusion is the devil's weapon so anytime you see strife and contention the devil is there devil is there somewhere 
So he was saying, well, what is all this before me? Now imagine, and he, it was not Abakuk by himself. There were few people who were dedicated unto the Lord who were always worshiping God. So they were worshiping God and right beside them, there were people worshiping idols in the same place. As a matter of fact, you had some priests who were so compromised. They went from worshiping the Lord, conducting services, services unto the Lord and offerings unto the Lord to offerings unto idols and conducting service for idol worship and you know anytime they're gonna do this idolatry they're involving all kind of sexual immoral acts and all these kind of thing it was not normal at all nothing about this 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 scene that our cook was seen was normal and for him to be crying out unto the lord about it and he wondering well why is god not hearing me why are you showing me all this and you're not hearing me why are you not answering me you, you know it was bad it was not a sim small time and a simple matter. It was very bad. So let's come to verse 4. Therefore the law is slack and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth come pass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. So here he's talking about it now. You see because everybody in the society where you could think of, where you could think of, okay, there's a position, there's a hierarchy. Every single story hierarchy in the society every single level that you could think about from the priests to the scribes all the way down to the people all of them were compromised you could not say okay the elders were good and the young people were, were getting on bad so you know the elders could discipline them no no no, no. young people were getting on bad elders were getting on bad the scribes were getting on bad the priests were getting on bad you see Everybody down to the king's house was getting numbered. In fact, they were sometimes leading the charge in these things. And here he was talking about it. He says, The law is slack. It's like the law has no power anymore. Now think about it. The law is to let the people know you have sinned, you have sinned, you have sinned, you have sinned, so you need to repent. And what they would have done is they would have brought offerings unto the Lord, they would have repented unto the Lord, and they would have turned from their wicked ways. Now, if the one who pulled in the law and the one who's supposed to remind the people of the law is happily indulging in these kind of idolatrous acts, you see how the law come like it powerless now? Because even the priests who are supposed to be obedient unto God and respectful of God, they didn't care about the law no more. So the law was slack. Because to condemn the neighbor would be to condemn themselves because they themselves were involved in all the things too. So they were slack. They were accommodating things that ought not to be. The judgment, no. The justice, that is due. So when, when, when a person is in the wrong, they end up getting the right. And the person who is right end up being prosecuted and chastised. So imagine somebody do something to you. You go for them to execute judgment on your behalf and they end up giving you punishment for, for justice. That sounds familiar in our time. It's the same thing. Sometimes people go looking for justice, expecting to receive good judgment and it is punishment they get. So you see, it was not normal at all because what was happening is the wicked were now surrounding the righteous. Like trying to enclose them in to devour them it was not normal at all no it was not normal at all because the amount of people who were righteous still trusting in god still walking uprightly there were so few and what do we know the wicked will always strike at the righteous they will always want to take out the people who are upright in heart because they're an eyesore to them it's like why do you have to make us feel bad that we are sinning? And they know they were sinning. You know. But the righteous reminded them every time that they were sinning unto the Lord and they did not want nor did they like it. So they would often try to terrify the righteous and to browbeat them. But what do we know? Our God sees everything. It looked like he's a far off, but he sees everything. So wrong judgment was always taking place because what? If the wicked surround the righteous how will justice come about the wicked is in the position to give the judgment in the first place and they were ruling against the righteous so the righteous were not getting any justice although they were in the right you see this cry was not a normal cry 
it was a heavy burden cry. So let's continue verse 5. Behold, he among the hidden, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. Glory to God. So here he is. He was there crying out to God, begging God, you know, making his case before God, like, look at what's taking place. Like, aren't you seeing what's taking place? What do you know? God is telling him, look among the hidden. Look among the nations. Look at what's happening in the nations around you. Look at what's happening. And regard what's taking place. Because he's going to do a marvelous work. No, no, no. The Lord is not going to do a work that is going to be oh so small that it's going to ask. No, it was going to bring about a marvelous work. Because see, how did Israel end up idolatrous in the first place? They followed the ways of the nations around them. No. They did not drive out the people who were previously in the land. Not all of them were gone. Some of them were there with their idolatrous ways. And then and add to that, they were surrounded by nations who were idolatrous too. So they learned of the nations and their ways. So the Lord is going to deal with everything and everyone now. So that's why he's saying, I will work a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it be told you, like, even if I come and tell you what I'm about to do, and I tell you before I do it, when I tell you, you cannot even imagine that it is possible. And when you actually see it come to pass, you cannot believe your eyes, what you're seeing is like that. Because the Lord is giving him the answer. You know? <laughs> so, 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 so listen. The Lord is responding to him. He has cried enough. He has cried long and hard before God. And God is answering him. Basically what the Lord is saying. What I have to say to you. Are you sure you want it? Because this one here. Even you cannot believe it. And he was not saying that Habakkuk would not have the faith to believe it. It's like the way it's going to be so mind-boggling. You're going to wonder, would our God really do that to us? It's like that. It's like that. Like, you see how they're behaving bad. You see how they're carrying on wild and, and, and lawless. When I am done with them, you yourself can be wondering, is this really the Lord who loves us that did this, it's like that. He was going to discipline them really harshly. Just as how they have gone after idolatry really hard and harshly, cutting on people, he was going to deal with them really harshly. He was going to treat them with the severity of where they think they retreat their idol worship. He was going to deal with them. Mm -hmm. So, yes, he cried out for the Lord to hear and to answer and to do something, but when the Lord tell him what he's going to do, wow, could he even believe it? So let's continue. Verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. So you see, the Lord is telling him, I raise up the Chaldeans. The Lord is showing him, they were there. They were little people. They were being browbeaten by the Assyrians. The Assyrians were doing to them whatever they wanted. They were serving Assyria for years. But I'm the one that raised them up. And the Lord raised them up to do something. And you see, the Lord raised up the Chaldeans, which are the Babylonians, by the way. He raised them up because he realized in them a character for destruction. He realized in them a hunger. For destruction they wanted to destroy everything and everyone they wanted to go and take over places that don't belong to them they were not afraid to barge into a place and take it over they were willing to go to extreme measures to dominate the place they were not afraid and they were terrible they were without compassion or remorse 
They did not care who it was and what it was about. They did not care if you fear the Lord and you serve him and you want. They did not care if you were a nation called by God's own name. They were not like the neighbors of Israel who have seen the might of the Lord and have they have heard about the might of the Lord, but they did not care. They were willing to go and take over the land. The Lord raised them up to do this. They were going to be fierce and fearless in their pursuit to conquer the entire place. And that is how the Lord raised them up. Because they wanted to quickly conquer. They were insatiable too. They could not wait to take over. And they were going to take over the entire place. Take note of the fact. This is the kind of people they were. And you see, the, the, the Babylonians, they were not joking. They, they went on to conquer <laughs> quickly, quickly, quickly. Like, by the time they conquer their first few cities and, and, and nations, leading up to the conquer of a Syrian empire. And remember, a Syrian empire ruled over a lot. So when they conquered Assyria, they conquered every place that Assyria conquered too. They were not making jokes. You know. As they were conquering, they were gathering and building their armies. Because they were campaigning against Assyria for a very long time. They were campaigning a long, long time. You know. So they were not making no joke about it. And they were so wicked. The Lord is here telling Abakuk, you see how they're wicked? Don't think it's them of their own self alone. They want to be wicked, yes. But they ain't have the audacity to be wicked. The Lord is who raised them up to be so. And the Lord is telling Habakkuk, I don't want to make them to be so. So verse 7, they are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Praise be to God. So you see... They were so dreadful and terrible. They, they did not care. They had no respect for person. They did not care who you were. They had no respect for your prestige. All was going to be cast down by them. They didn't care. Whatever they decide to be judgment and dignity is according to what they define it in themselves. If they decide that this is, is, is something that is dignified then they will make it dignified if they decide that what you call dignified is not dignified they will trample on the foot they will trample it under their foot and sully it because in their eyes what you exalt as dignified they don't consider it to be so they were so wicked and evil that they were willing to steal every single concept every single idea that Assyria had and rename it for their own they claim everything that Assyria was exalted for as their own. They rename it as theirs. They wipe out of the history books as far as back as you could ever think to imagine. The things that Assyria was known to have accomplished are now coined. Accomplished by the Babylonians. Listen, whatever you see happening in our time where you see nations are renaming, conquering and renaming things. Conquering and taking over things. They did not just get that of their own. The Babylonians had that. Take note of the fact. The audacity of the Babylonians. You have to understand. The Lord gave them it. They were terrible in every way that you could even imagine. Imagine. They had no respect for nothing outside of themselves. They set the boundary. They set the mark. They decide. They were arrogant. Beyond the word itself. And take note. The enemy. That pride himself to be arrogant. It's not him that give them the power. You know? Remember they worshiping the devil. But it's the Lord that raised him up. So you can imagine. You can imagine. They were so far. Arising in the world. To the point that. The enemy could not even decide what he wanted to do with them. He could not do nothing with them. Because no matter what, they were going to rise up. Their rise was not under the devil's control. The Lord raised them up. So when you, when you, when you read about the exploits of the Babylonian and the, the way they conquered and the way they were meticulous and thorough, don't think it's the devil that gave them ideas. Mm -mm. It's the Lord that raised them up. Take note of the fact. 
let's continue verse 8 their arses also were swifter than leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves and their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far they shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat glory be to god because what they were so wicked and so hungry for power remember now this this babylon has been campaigning for very long trying to get alliances you know to take over assyria they were a small nation you know some of the nations that they were approaching for alliances were bigger than themselves but they had ambition to take over because they were tired of the assyrians ruling over them they decided we have had enough with these assyrians because what the same person who established babylon is the same person who established assyria the same nimrod they're worshiping the same devil but assyria was given the go ahead they were set exalted above the rest and assyria was making them have it assyria was going all about and showing everybody the might of assyria and they were sick of it they were so sick of it they were so sick of paying tribute to them so then they started now to be raised up by the lord and what you think these people took it so far their horses were swift swifter than leopards what i tell you now you know leopards fast eh? you know that can't be normal their horses were going to be so swift to outrun any horses of their enemies the horses were also going to be so swift to take them far and wide so you know the distance that a normal horse would cover their horses are covering twice as much and even more than twice as much that distance because they were so swift no, nothing was normal about it they were so fierce in their dealings and when they were cutting on people they were so wicked and evil they were doing things that nobody else has ever done they were wiping out nations with the most cruel methods possible that you could even think to imagine. And so they spread out because what they did, as they conquered nation, the people had a choice. Join us or be killed. They didn't really have a choice, you know. There was only one. Join. And when a person joined the Babylonians, the person identity that they had before was totally wiped out. They were given indoctrination and they were renamed as a Babylonian. From that day forward, they were going to be known as a Babylonian. And those who were fit for war and strong, they were given a part of the army. So you can see how they spread out. Because when they come upon a group of people and the group of people realize they are not afraid to cut them down because they have shown them the wickedness that they can do and they realize wait a minute wait a minute we had better surrender because it's not going to be nice at all for us so what they did convert them and then then they didn't just take them and convert them they brainwash them with the sorcery because sorcery and witchcraft was in their thing too you know <laughs> Don't think they, they, they were they were they were they were they were all in the same thing as Assyria, but they were worse now. So they made the people who they captured Babylonians, and before you know it, the people who did not willingly want to join them to go conquer Assyria were now forced through captivity to be a part of the Babylonian army to make it big. To not just bring down Assyria, but bring down everything under Assyria and more. Because what you know about people who have gotten a taste of power, they go always get hungry for more. So they were coming from very far because places that Assyria didn't conquer, they conquered. And places that Assyria had conquered, they conquered. And they were coming very fast, flying swiftly. That's why they're their animal symbol was the eagle because they were flying swiftly and they were hungry so they were sweeping up everybody in their way they were eating everybody cutting them down destroying them converting them to be Babylonians. you see when assyria and people in times past would have conquered a place they would have left the people 
in the place to just pay them tribute. The Babylonians changed the system. They captured the people, carried them to Babylon. To build up Babylon. To make Babylon a great nation. To rename them. Train them in the ways of Babylonians. And have them join them as Babylonians. So if they started out with a small army, the next time you see them on the move, it's going to be a, a bigger army. And a bigger army. And a bigger army. And it just kept getting bigger. Till when you hear them coming, the march of them alone is shaking the ground far away. And when you hear the shout of them, you know it's danger. And when you hear their horses, by the time you hear the horses, they have arrived. They weren't, they weren't playing around. They were very fast. And they were conquering as they go. Take note of that. So verse 9, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. So, like the east wind blowing. And we know how strong the east wind is. They were very strong. Because as I tell you, they were just converting all the strong men they could capture. So, they were like the east wind coming. Very strong. And they were gathering all the captivity. All of them. Because... The people who were unwilling, they were not going to let them live to come cause no rebellion at a later stage. No. The people who were unwilling get cut down one time. So the people looking and seeing the unwilling people being cut down get willing real quick. Because they don't want to be cut down now. And what do you know? Their armies grew. And so they become strong. Because they had strong men in the army. Because who didn't know that they could be strong were trained in the Babylonian way to be strong. Because the Babylonians did not just fight with physical strength. No, they fought with witchcraft and sorcery. So they fought in ways that other people had never thought to fight before. Some people were just depending on their physical strength. No, the Babylonians got real deep in magic. What they call, they are the what they're even the, the people who you would often hear the term magic. People think it's Egypt. Egypt has always been idolatrous and a faithful believer of the kingdom of darkness. But the Babylonians take it at a different level. That even Egypt, when they were conquered by the Babylonians, that's when Egypt realized what they could do. You can imagine. Egypt, who was exalted. Conquered by Babylonians and then being shown the way by them. And that's the reason why most of the things that you see today are patterned after Babylon. The world systems that we have today, they come straight from Babylon. Every single nation, their world system comes straight from Babylon. Because Babylon stole everybody's idea and make it their own. Including what was Assyria's, what was Egypt's, what was, yes, sir? Down to what was Judah's. They steal everybody's way of ruling, everybody's concept of authority and how they, how they carry out their, their things. And they took what they wanted and discarded what they did not want. But everything that they accepted, they stamped the name Babylon on it. And it was Babylon. After that point, it was Babylon. So Egypt did not have Egypt anymore. And Assyria did not have Assyria anymore. Like, if you want to find out what came from Assyria into Babylon now, it will be so difficult. Because they always steal the ideas as their own. That's what they do. They were thieves. Take note of the fact. So they gather all the captivity as the sun. Because they, they were not going to let any captivity escape them. No. They destroy you or they capture you. That's how Babylon see things. And they carry everybody quite into Babylon. So what they kept doing is widen the boundaries of Babylon. So you know where previously people would have captured people. Leave them in their own land to work. No. They capture them, carry them, displace them, put them into Babylon and let them build up their cities and let them dwell there as captives to serve them. 
and not just to serve them as slaves because see the babylonians had a different concept they renamed the people they give them identity according to babylonians customs they gave them lifestyle that were babylonian so if you were not careful to hold on to where you came from you will lose your identity in babylon that's how this concept of renaming people and redoing things and remodeling things come about that's all this whole concept of brainwashing people listen brainwashing did not just come about yesterday the babylonians made this they are the ones who started this old mind control thing where they manipulate people brainwash them trauma 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 to break them down and then retaught them what they want them to learn it's a babylonian concept you hear people calling it, oh it's this this person this this no it's a babylonian concept it's been around for a very long time the babylonians used that when they were conquering that's why every single kingdom that followed babylon had to take from babylon to continue and the same babylonian system continued to now it is all from babylon take note of the fact and how we know this even the judgment that came about when christ returns you will see who he judge who he cast down what was the name of the great city babylon because the concept the ideologies the systems were all babylon now you see the devil take credit for raising up and and carrying on but the lord is who raised up the babylonians they use the devil's weapons and the devil's things but the lord is who raised up the babylonians what i tell you they stick to beat you is carefully chosen by god what am i telling you if you decide you're not gonna serve the lord and stay faithful to god the stick to beat you has been picked by god take note of the fact so let's continue verse 10 and they shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be as scorn unto them they shall deride every stronghold they shall heap dust and take it praise be to god so these babylonians were making rampart of earth so they would make their rampart and they would climb up and take every city no matter which state is you can imagine how much that took to get done and they did not care you see because they had a lot of soldiers to these soldiers it was just like child's play to make a rampart to take over a city they could see the, the the people in the city panicking and and trying to make ready for war and they very quickly in quick succession build the rampart and it's ready now to take them over when people know the babylonians were going to come in they had a choice to make are they going to die are they going to become babylonians that was it because they have heard about them from before you see the violence that they exhibit and this, the swiftness with which they executed their conquer is what they're known for like that's why they are considered the eagles because they were swift they were deadly they were violent but is the swiftness of it all like before you know it you're conquered like weren't they just building a rampart how did they get in the city already it was not normal at all it was not and they were not joking around they did not care if you consider yourself the king of the place the prince of the place they were gonna cut you down like a common man they did not care about that they did not they were not careful to have no conversation with no king to negotiate if no they cut you down like a common man in fact if the king surrender they take them to babylon and throw them into prison till they conform them to be a babylonian if they don't want to conform then they kill them they were not they were not they were not careful to consider position and and, and what, what is that so you are so you are a prince so what is that so you are the king so what is that to them you are nothing you're nothing at all and wherever you think oh this is my strong th he was gonna come down it was gonna come down what am i trying to tell you the babylonians were terrible 
But they were not terrible because they just wanted to be terrible alone. The Lord raised them up. Remember that. So, when you hear about the exploits of Babylon and the Babylonians conquer and the success of Babylon, take note. The Lord raised them up to use them for his purpose. Take note of the fact. And consider carefully what does that mean to us? What should it mean to us concerning the fear of our God? Hmm? Let us consider. So let's let's continue. Verse 11. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. So you see, the common mistake these people make. You see, people, and, and, and we have to be careful we don't do this in our time. The common mistake people make is when the Lord is doing something, they attribute it to the devil. Now, as I tell you before, the Assyrians were, they were the ones that the devil were working with. They were terrible. They were wicked. They were carrying on. But even that which the devil had raised up were conquered by the Lord. Because... When Assyria's king went with his pomp and pride to try to capture Judah, he had to run back home in a panic because the Lord sent an army for him that he could not fight. And he had to run, run back home. And there he died. Can I kill him? What am I trying to tell you? The devil's power is child's play. The devil has no ability to give these men of Babylon any power to make them conquer the way they did. It's not possible. Now, because they, they know who they are worshipping, they know that they're worshipping an idol, they, seeing their strength, seeing their power, seeing the conquer, became high and lifted up. They became high and lifted up. Now, the Lord himself called Babylon fort. They know. They knew it. Because they were able to even point out to the children of Judah. This was prophesied. This, this was sanctioned by God. They knew. They were not just empty head. They were not just empty head serving idols alone. They were actually studying. <laughs> they were seeking out spiritual knowledge. So including making contact with our God himself. So when they were commissioned to go and conquer, they were given the word to go forth. Instead of worshipping our God though, instead of giving him the glory that is due unto his name as they ought to have done, they go and ascribe the glory of our God unto their God, their idol. They basically were giving the praise due unto our God to the devil. That's what a lot of us do in today's time. The Lord has led us to a place. The Lord has delivered us from something. The Lord has given us something. We take it and we ascribe it to the devil. And we go in, you see? Now, Babylon, they were wicked. They were terrible. They were swift. They were violent. But they were raised up by God. That they come now and ascribe all the success all the years they're bowing down to this Murdoch, which is their God. All the years they're bowing down to this Murdoch. This Murdoch never yet let them escape from Assyria. Because, you see, that's how the devil works. He will let them think that, yes, he go raise them up. But he already have a, a big thing with Assyria going on to oppress all of them. But he go give them the impression, yes, yes, yes. He go come, he go come, never go come, never to come. You know why? The word of God has already gone forth about these Babylonians. They were going to be used. And so they were considered so insignificant at the time. A nation that had to be going around to ask people to help them. I imagine that nation, that same nation who seek after help. Because they were seeking after help, you know. They even came to Judah when King Ezekiah got sick and he recovered. 
and the Lord extended his life. That was when Babylonians made a contact with them to try to see if Israel would help them to conquer the Assyrians, you know. That was when King Ezekiah made a mistake and showed them all his wealth and boast about the wealth of his kingdom and showed them everything. And Isaiah went and tell him, because of what you have done, they will carry away everything that you own, every wealth you have, and that of your children, and all the other things that was to come after. So, so, so you see, they were not just going around and just wanting to conquer alone. They wanted, they were seeking every assistance they could. And when they sought out the Lord to get the assistance, and the Lord gave them the assistance, having conquered, now they want to ascribe the, 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 the way they conquer to their God, Murdoch. The devil never helped them to do nothing. But they want to give the devil all the praise. You see why God has to deal with them? That's why God has to deal with Babylon. And every single nation that follows, the Lord is who decided how the nations were going to come and how they were going to conquer and how long they were going to conquer and who was going to take them out. Because ever so often when the, when the nations become too exalted, too high and lifted up, they forget that God helped them to achieve the means they did. You know what happened? They go ascribe it to the devil. Every single nation have the same problem. Every single kingdom that rose up had that same problem. So, to the average person, they will say, Oh, it's the kingdoms that the devil... No. The devil did not raise up the kingdoms of the earth. The systems that the kingdom have in place all came from the, the, the system of the kingdom of Babylon that the Babylonians did not just come and arrive at by themselves sprinkled in were ideas from the enemy because the enemy created the world system for the most part but it was not just oh the devil gave the world system no they borrowed concept from every single place they conquer including Judah so that's why if you notice the world system, you will notice that even the laws, how did they know what to persecute people and how to persecute people by? They use the law. They use the law. That's why you will, you will wonder, well, how is it that every place seems to have similar punishment and things concerning the transgressions? They could have only known that through the law. That's how it come about. And what happened is, Every nation continued it because why throw out a good thing? It was working for the Babylonians. And it is superior to theirs. So they kept it. And that's how it is passed on, passed on, passed on. But the arrogancy of Babylon, the increase in their wickedness and the, and the, and the idolatry and the fornications too, and the fact that they teach people to become idolaters too. And they did not give Glory unto God, and they did not fear God too. That was their folly. That was their folly, you know. So when they become so powerful, they credit that power to the devil through their God, Murdoch. What do we know? They claim that Murdoch is a god of war. Murdoch never lead them to no war, but they claim that Murdoch helped them to conquer. Hmm. Well, sir. So. We go see if Murdoch can save them. But. The Lord is talking to Abacook. So the Lord is showing Abacook. This is what shall happen. This is what shall happen. It's not just them. It's not just the physical mind of him. In fact, in fact mind, is, mind is physical. It's, 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 a, it's a mind change. It's a change of spirit that takes place in Babylon. Because what do we know about the devil? He loves to come and steal things. Right? So when... Pride enter into Babylon and the devil swoop in to collect all the credit, which he does all the time. Take note of the fact. They gave it unto their God Marduk, which the devil get praise out of it because Marduk is himself. You see? What do we know? What God will do with them. So verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? We shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Glory be to God. So, 
the Lord having answered Habakkuk, Habakkuk now start to glorify God. But you see, Habakkuk ain't done questioning God yet. Habakkuk ready to wrestle with God the whole time because Habakkuk want to know more. Habakkuk have a lot of questions to ask. So here he's saying, aren't thou not from everlasting? Because we know our God is eternal, you know. Our God is not guessing if what he's saying is so. He knows it is. Take note of the fact. He could tell you, I'm going to raise up the Babylonians. They're going to conquer. They're going to conquer everywhere. They're going to conquer swiftly, mightily, violently, without mercy, without care, no respect for persons. They're going to conquer. But they're going to become iron lifted up. The spirit go change. They go put all the power that they have attributed unto their God and that's going to be their downfall. So in the one answer the Lord gave Habakkuk, Habakkuk see the rise and fall of Babylon at the same time. Glory be to God. And what happened? He praised God. Because our God is the everlasting God, of course we praise him. You know, the only one. He is the only God. Take note of the fact. And so Habakkuk realized the plans of God was going to extend to mercy for, for Judah. To the point that Judah will not die. The people will not die. The people will be chastised. They will be brought to humility, but they will not die. Glory be to God. And so he realized that the Lord has given judgment, not just for the people who were in Israel causing violence and doing wickedness, but also to the Babylonians who are going to exercise their violence and their fierce judgment on the people. They now, after they exercise their violence, were going to be judged. The Lord was going to judge them for their own self. You know, he was going to judge them because that's how our God does it. He judges everyone and every nation too, you know. So he was a praising God or mighty God, which we know he is because see our God is almighty. He is our rock. We can be confident in him. Praise be to God. And what? He is the one that will establish all the people mark them for correction so when they step out of line where they made the mistake to go and credit the glory of god unto their god god was going to correct them and teach them a lesson let them understand you know who has done it you know it is the lord god who has done it that you know and still go ascribe it to your god you will feel the punishment of it what do you know no matter how they're trying to hide. And no matter how they're trying now to pretend that our God did not have a hand in their nation, did not have a hand in their kingdom being established. It is undeniable that no other nation following the Babylonians could ever do what the Babylonians have done. And it's because the Lord raised them up to do the work he did. And throughout all the other kingdoms that came after, the Lord carried out his work accordingly in all of them. No matter how they deny to give him the glory, he take his glory and he chastised them for their folly. Glory be to God. So we know we can trust our God to correct them. When they step out of line and they forget who they are, don't worry. Our God will remind them. They will know most assuredly. So let's continue to verse 13. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devour it, the man that is more righteous than he. So you see, he's asking him, Oh God, but you see, why? Why do you hold your peace? You know, that's what he's asking the Lord. You know, remember, he's not wrestling it out to the Lord. No, he's acknowledging the fact that, oh, Almighty God, you, you are so pure, you're so holy, 
You cannot look upon evil to behold it. You cannot look upon iniquity, that is wickedness. Right? Our God is the just judge. He has to punish those that do wickedness. He has to. It's not that, oh, we want God to. No, it's in God's nature to judge the wicked. It's in his nature to deal with them. <laughs> Take note of the fact. Because he's holy and what right do we ever have come exalting itself before a righteous and holy God? Take note of the fact. So he's saying, why, why then are you looking upon them that deal treacherously? Yeah? And why you hold your tongue when, when they devour the man that is more righteous than themselves? Hmm? Because what was to happen is the Babylonians were to carry off the faithful, devout followers of God, you know. The believers of God. The ones who were worshipping God, truly worshipping God. The Babylonians were to carry them after Babylon. Into captivity. Because the Lord told them to obediently go. Because he had to purify the land. So here is Habakkuk saying, why are you holding your peace, you know? Why is it that you don't look upon them to basically judge them? He knows God will judge him. But he is asking the Lord, why are you holding your peace? Why are you not speaking out concerning the judgment of them? Because clearly, he has received the judgment of the Lord that Judah will be judged, that judgment will come to Judah. But now, he wants, he wants the word of God to come now to tell him what is going to happen to the enemy then? Because they deal treacherously and they're devouring the righteous. They want to take away the righteous. And take note, he was not just talking about the Babylonians in this sense. He was talking about the wickedness of the people who are currently still cutting down people around him in, in, in Judah. You know? Because while he's talking to the Lord, remember the Babylonians don't come yet. They were on their way doing all the exploits. But it's like he's saying, Lord, you know you cannot be whole to see wickedness. Then why is it that you're holding your peace concerning these people? Because they were cutting down the people. And what he had to understand is that the Lord is going to use Babylon to teach Judah the lesson they had to learn. But... The Lord was going to teach Babylon the lesson they should never forget. That they taught Judah to learn. If you understand what I'm saying. Babylon got high and lifted up and forget itself. But the Lord was there to correct them and remind them. You don't, you don't, you, you don't forget yourself. Not when the Lord used you to really bring correction to his people. You go forget yourself. No, you don't. If the Lord... Is willing to chastise his own people. Is the people who not call by his name. He's going to be afraid to chastise. It's like that. Hmm? So let's continue verse 14. And makest men as the fishes of the sea. As the creeping things that have no ruler over them. See. Because what, what do we know. When the captivity came about. It was as if they were all gathered. As fishes of the sea like you know they are without a ruler you see because what their current rulers was going to be taken out of the place so you know like the things that creep around on the insects they don't have no ruler over them but they go about doing their own thing accordingly he was asking the lord well why do you why do you why do you have them behave like that and you see take note abacook is not Ignorant of God's ways, you know. Habakkuk is very much aware of who God is and what God has done. And what he's saying is, why are you looking upon them and their ways that they're doing, the things that they're going to do to, in the captivity, in the way they go about conquering? Why are you looking on the way they behave like they don't report to nobody, these Babylonians he's talking about? You know? Or they're uncontrolled. Like when you look at the way they conquer, it's like there was nobody to really put a parameter around them and put them into boundary and set like a limit on their behavior. 
You see? He don't obviously look that way, but what do we know about our God? If he raised them up, he know how to discipline them too. Take note of the fact. So, while it looked away to Habakkuk, having heard the word of God, now remember, it's a, he asked the Lord a question, the Lord answered him. But the Lord has not given him everything yet. So now he have more questions to ask because he wants to know. So, so what's going to happen to these people when, when they have done all this? Are they going to go unchecked? Are they going to go unpunished? What do you have to say concerning them? So, <laughs> he was curious to know, yeah? So let's continue verse 15. They take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. So what is he saying? You see how they take up the, the, the men of the earth as fishes like the Babylons where they were conquering it. Eh? They were gathering people like as though it was just going out and throwing a net and fishing. And like you just cast down a hook and, and that's it you get fish like that. And they were just catching them in the net. Like, you know, just gathering them. And they were rejoicing and being glad because the more they conquer the people, the more Babylon's power and empire grew. And you see, one of the problems with people when they have excelled, one of the common problems with people who have excelled, especially when they're coming from very humble beginnings, is that they become too proud, too high and lifted up. Once they have made it to a certain level, they think that they have arrived. The Babylonians got to this place where they thought that they have arrived. They thought that there's no nation like unto them. And they become and lifted up. You know what happened? The Lord bring them low, you know. He correct them. Mm -hmm. It may not look that way, but he, he is a fair and just God. He is going to correct them. So although they seem to just come out of nowhere and swiftly change the landscape and you know, change everything. All of a sudden, it would appear. The Lord is going to deal with them. They are going to be dealt with. So, let's continue. Verse 16. Therefore, they sacrifice unto their net and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Praise be to God. So, here Abacuc realized the Babylonians were using their sorcery their witchcraft their astrology they were using all kind of other devices right from the kingdom of darkness to carry out their exploits now remember the lord enabled them to go forth and conquer swiftly without fear and all that but they were using their devices that are unfruitful and unprofitable right but they were ascribing the success that they were getting, which the Lord enabled them to have, they were ascribing that success to the use of the sorcery. So because they used the sorcery and the witchcraft and all those other things, they were thinking, oh, we were able to be swifter because of this. We were able to be, you see, you see like that? So they were incorporating these things into the conquest. And so now they were making offerings Unto their gods because they think, oh yes, our gods have done it. So they were thinking, they were thinking, okay, the power of the Babylonians is in the sorcery, the witchcraft, the astrology, all that kind of thing. Pride of a Chaldean now took over where anybody who is a Chaldean wanted to study all those dark things, those occult knowledge. They wanted to learn them. And so that's why you had... This whole concept of being a Chaldean means that you are well learned in occultism. It was not just witchcraft and sorcery, it was very deep occultism because they were practicing those things and they were thinking that that is where the Babylonians got their strength from. That's why they studied the stars. That's why they worshiped the heavens. They worshiped the stars of heaven. That's why they, they went to such extreme. Like any nation you see now, carrying on like they worship the devil and his principalities and his powers the babylonians did those things before them and they ascribed their success to the devil and his agents 
and they ascribe their success to the different weapons that they were utilizing from the kingdom of darkness not realizing and it's not that they did not know they just wanted to do what they want to do because they did not want to give glory to god see because they ascribe that okay if they give glory unto god they're gonna give glory unto a god that is not the god of their nation so the pride of their nation came up in their heart and they could not do it they did not want to do it and so they were making offering unto their god and they were calling and they were thinking in their mind that yeah we're going to attribute the success to our god and they and they did do that right when they had their feast and they feasted a lot they they did a lot of ritualistic things to show that they were appreciative of the success that they would have ascribed to their god so when daniel mishael ananiah and azariah did not want to eat of the babylonian food it's not because they were just being picky alone no the babylonian meats came from their feasts their feasts unto their gods so they used to have every excuse they made every 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 feast unto their god so when they went and killed meats and, and all that kind of thing they were offerings unto their god so because of that daniel and the other hebrew boys they didn't want to have that kind of meat because they did not agree in fact they know the truth of the matter that is the lord who is the one who raised up the babylonians to do his work so they were not even gonna eat the meat at all so that's why they asked for vegetable instead some people were thinking oh they were they were kept because of the vegetables no they were kept because of the grace of god vegetable by itself could not have kept them tell us the fact a lot of people made a mistake and they, they ascribe that a vegetable based diet is better and no they were kept by god because they did not want to dishonor God by eating things offered to idols. A lot of people miss that. Let's not miss it at all. They burnt incense and made offerings and sacrifices unto the idols. Then they ate the portions from those sacrifices. That's why they didn't want no part of it. Glory to God. And what they would do, they would have these elaborate feasts and then the the food would be distributed around and everyone gathered at to eat because if you don't eat the food offered by them to the idol to the to the god it shows that you are disrespecting it, it shows that you're not becoming one with the nation it shows that you're you are a threat to the nation that's why the god was very worried when they asked him to give them only vegetable because he knew what that implication meant that if the king became aware that they were not partaking of the sacrifice he himself would be in trouble it was not just because he wanted to be concerned that they would not be fat and they would not look well no it was also the fact that they would not be one with the nation because every time the people partake of the sacrifice you know they were pledging allegiance to the nation i know you may think Oh, it was a simple meal. No, they were pledging allegiance to the nation by partaking of that one meal. Take note of the fact. So they became all focused on their gods and what their god have done and whatnot. And they were so busy having their sumptuous meals and yeah, giving praise unto their idols instead of realizing, give glory to God. All these years you've been with your idol, I'll never let you conquer not even one little town beside you. And look you're conquering how many nations now and you still think it's a useless idols instead of giving glory unto god some of us do this thing today too god has rescued us taken us from one place to the next elevated us and we still think it's something else or someone else hmm? rather than giving glory unto god we give glory unto something or someone else let's be careful so verse 17 and last shall they therefore empty their net 
and not spare continually to slay the nations. You see? Because what? The more they conquered, the more they wanted to. The Babylonians were not planning to let any of the nations around them escape. Not one bit. They wanted every nation conquered that could be conquered. That was the mindset. And so they were not going to spare anyone. They wanted to, without pity, because they no sympathy, continue to slay all the nations. Because what? The more they slay the nations, the more people they capture to carry to Babylon, the more enlarged their empire become. The people were able to work for them. You understand? So that the Babylonians were too proud now and too exalted. Because see, Habakkuk was shown the word of God, you know. Habakkuk was shown the word of God. And here he got the understanding. Because he was still questioning God. But he's getting the understanding that the Lord will not stand for these things because the Lord, the Lord loves justice and judgment is his portion. Why would he allow them to just empty their net and, and reap more and more and more? How much more will be left? Hmm? So the mindset of the Babylonians were understood by Habakkuk. They were, they were going to be insatiable. They did not want to stop conquer. And it was born now out of a desire to be only one in charge. And at that time, pride has entered into their heart. So they stop realizing that they're, they're coming from humble beginnings. Hmm? They did not care so much about the humble beginnings anymore. They were known as the Babylonians. They liked that. What do we know? Or God will deal with everyone who deals treacherously with one another. Everyone who deals treacherously with another. The Lord deals with them. Mm -hmm. We can count on that. Glory be to God. So as we go through today, let us remember. The Lord is hearing our cry now. He is witnessing too. He has a word to tell us. But sometimes when the Lord tells us the word, he has to tell us. We ourselves can't believe it. It is so hard to take in but what can we say our god is the ruler of us all because even the army that came out to, to judge will be judged too by him so see you see a person rising up and they're looking like oh they're conqueror today remember they will be double dealt with tomorrow they'll be dealt with ten out of the fact and so we see the babylonian army they were not just simple at all. They were swift. They were mighty. They were powerful. They were violent. They were very defiant. What do we know? They became too high and lifted up for their own good. And they started to give the Lord's praise to idols. That was the biggest mistake they make. They did a lot to do with them. Since they believe that they don't have a ruler over themselves. And nobody can contain them. What the Lord was going to have to do with them. And the more they capture people, and the more they enslave people, is the more they feast unto their God, Marduk. Marduk who did nothing for them. How do we know? Never give the glory of our God to another. It will not end well for you. Because the Lord reigns. He is king over all. He is beholding the evil and the good. And he has the reward accordingly. Do mercy. Exercise it. When it's within your ability to do so, take note of this one thing. The Lord loves those who are righteous, but he's against those who are wicked and violent. Because if you love to shed blood and take people's life and steal from them and do wickedness, the Lord's going to deal with you. So let's pray. Most right, some time, Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Under the authority of the Holy Spirit, Father, we love you, we thank you, we worship you, we give you all the thanks, we give you all the praise, we give you all the worship that's due unto your name, Almighty God. We acknowledge that we are your children. We acknowledge that, O oh, Almighty God, you are the one who looks down upon us and gives us our bread, our due. Father, it is you that decides what we should go through and what we ought to face and what we ought to do and everything concerning us accordingly. Father, because it is all about you. 
help us to learn and understand it's all about you it has always been about you it will always be about you glory be to god oh almighty god be magnified be lifted up you are all powerful father you are the one who make the one who designed the weapon and you're also the one who made the one who will use the weapon father you also are the one who made the person for whom the weapon is designed and father you have told us in your word that as your servants no weapon that's formed against us will prosper and every word that is spoken against us in judgment we will condemn because our righteousness is from you O almighty god and this is the heritage you have given us glory be to your holy name thank you jesus so father it's with this humility that we humble ourselves today O almighty god and we confess our sin we repent of them too we do not want anything to do with these sins we give them up willingly thank you jesus jesus wash us clean with your blood let us be cleansed from unrighteousness blot out all our transgression holy holy god we we love you holy one of god we praise you oh our god we acknowledge that you are holy and true and kind and just and pure oh almighty god we desire to be filled up by you because we're hungry so fill us up with your love your mercy your truth your peace your guidance your grace fill us up with your goodness your understanding your your wisdom your knowledge O oh, Almighty God, fill us up with your righteousness, your holiness. Fill us up continuously with your faith and your peace. O oh, Almighty God, fill us up continuously with humility. O oh, Almighty God, let us not exalt ourselves, but let us humble ourselves before you always. Praise God. Father, fill us up with your anointing, Holy Spirit. You're welcome. Do what you want according to your good pleasure. We are grateful. We delight in you. We desire to be with you. We desire to give you everything we've got. Oh, Almighty God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Let your will be done in our life in accordance to your will. Oh, Almighty God, we're grateful. Oh, Father, remember the saints. Remember the wicked. Remember the sinners. Oh, Almighty God, you know the category we fall in. You know those of us who are pretending to be saved and we're not. Father, teach us the folly of our ways and let us understand. Salvation is not something to play around with. Because you will reign on those that have failed to accept Jesus. They will face a bitter end. Teach us to know we do not want to face your wrath because it's going to be terrible. Glory be to God. So, Father, help us all. To be true when we're called saints. Father, strengthen us and embolden us. Father, give us the trial by fire to test us. To see if there be any wicked ways in us, any evil thing in us. Because you do not delight in those things. You delight in righteousness, judgment, and loving kindness, almighty God. Teach us how to do that which you desire. Glory be to God. Almighty God. The sinners, give them opportunity to repent. The wicked too. Give the wicked a chance to see the folly of their ways. Sometimes they're so covered under this wickedness and filth. They drink so much of them devil's cocktail. They care of self. Realize that it's folly. They're going straight to their death and they don't realize it. So Father, rescue everyone that cry out unto your name, O Almighty God. Jesus, if they cry out for you, rescue them. Thank you, Jesus. We're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Father, remember the enemy. The enemy. The wicked enemy. Delighting to steal your praise. Delighting to steal your glory. Always hankering and wanting to take credit for what you have done. But Father, you will deal with the enemy. He will be cast down and bashed to pieces. He will be tormented. Fear will come upon him and consume him. Oh, Almighty God, thank you, Jesus. Father, remember the kingdom of darkness and the wickedness they have done and the wickedness they continue to do. Father, we come against the principalities and the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness in high places. Father, we come against them and we ask that you will judge them and find them wanted and deal with them and pour out your wrath upon them without mixture. Oh, Almighty God, full measure. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, stir up like a whirlwind against them. Stir up like a whirlwind with almighty power and the blood of Jesus and drop on the kingdom of darkness and restrain them. Those who are delighting in torment in the church and wanting to come against the church. We will not have it. We come against them. We rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus and we tell him, get thee behind me, Satan, because we know 
He is our enemy. We want no part of him. We reject everything of the devil. Every single device, every single plan, every single gift. We don't want nothing from you, devil. We reject the power that he come with the filthy self trying to put like power. It's useless. Filthy rag. Unfruitful and unprofitable. Glory be to God. Father, endow us with the Holy Spirit's power and authority. Oh Jesus, that you have given us. And teach us how to war. Teach us how to fight in the spirit. Oh Almighty God, rest your hand upon us and give us some eye salve. Let us see. Let us see. Because in this world, if we're blinded, we can't fight. So Holy Spirit, we trust you to lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Glory to God. But remove all the blinds from our eyes. So we will not be entrapped and fooled. We will know what we ought to do in worship and how we ought to approach you, Father, concerning our requests. And how we ought to fight in the spiritual warfare that we are fighting. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. We cast down everything that exalts itself high above. And we are also bringing into captivity every thought in obedience to Christ. Glory be to God. Father, let only your will be done. Let only your desire for our lives be established and come to pass. Glory to God. Let the plans that you have concerning us be manifested and manifold. Father, as we have read your words, let them be planted in our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Father, let us be planted firmly. Plant the words in the fertile soil of Christ that they'll bring forth fruit in abundance for the kingdom. Glory to God. Father, in our going out, in our coming in, be with us, help us, guide us, lead us. Let us not take it for granted that we are called by your name, but help us to come to you boldly, O Almighty Father, humbling ourselves, and let you use us for your service. Let us avail ourselves to be used for your good works. Glory be to God. Father, teach us to trust in you and to honor you with our lives. Glory to God. Father, teach us not to be despondent when we see the wicked expanding themselves and carrying on prosperous. They are but for a moment. Teach us not to be dissuaded nor dismayed because the wicked is surrounding us, wanting to destroy us and eat us up. We know our defense is you, O Almighty God. And even if we cannot see, we know we trust and we stay the course because you are our deliverer. Because, Father, you deliver us from evil all the time. Glory be to God. Father, as you've forgiven us, we forgive others because we do not want anything that separates us from you. Thanks be to God. O oh, glorious one of God, our Savior, Jesus, as you've poured out your blood for us, we are grateful. Father, we're grateful to you. We're grateful in Jesus' name. We're grateful. And so, Father, as we go out and in our coming in, cover us, cover us with the blood of Jesus, cover us with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, cover us in fire, let us walk in fire, oh, Almighty God. Send your angels, scatter them all about to do the work that you have desired, oh, Almighty God. Strengthen the walk of all of us who depend and trust in you, oh, Almighty God. Teach us to know, to yield to you, to trust in you, to surrender to you all the time. Glory be to God. Father, as we go forth today, let us hear a word from you, O Almighty God. Speak to us. We desire to hear from you. O Father, we're grateful to you in Jesus' name. We're grateful. Holy Spirit, breathe upon the path. Establish your standard. Let peace be wherever we go. Go before us and make the way plain and straight. And lead us in the path that Jesus is, O Almighty God. We're grateful. We're grateful. And Father, as we're about to go forth... Put your blessings upon us because we know, oh, almighty God, the blessings that you give us enrich us and we have no sorrow. Praises be to God. We glorify you, we magnify you, we worship you, we give you all the thanks and all the praise. And Father, as we go forth, we wrap our prayers in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, our King, our God, our everything. We are grateful. We anoint our prayers in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, oh, almighty God. We are so grateful for the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we would not be able to know the truth glory be to god we send them up to you oh, almighty father sweet savior may they be 
May they be accepted in your sight, O oh, Almighty God. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. Because we worship you, O oh, Father. We give you all the praise and all the thanks. We love you, O oh, Father. Because you love us with a perfect love, O oh, Almighty Father. And your perfect love casts out all fear, O oh, Almighty Father. Because you have given us not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Teach us how to use the power that you have given us, O oh, Almighty God. Praise be to God. We yield to you, we yield to you, we worship you. We are praying in Jesus' name, the only name whereby we are saved. We are humbling ourselves, understanding that in his name we receive. Because Jesus said, when you pray in my name, I will do it. Whatever you ask, I will do it. Praise be to God. And so we believe it is done. O oh, Almighty God, you who rules heaven and the earth, let your name be exalted in all the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go for it, children of the king. Let us remember our God is the one who rules, no matter what it seems. Peace be unto you, as Jesus gives, so let's receive. All the best for today. I love you.